Welcome to the Insomnia Project. Sit back, relax, and listen as we have a conversation about the ordinary, the mundane. Some people say the uninteresting. I don't. Some people do. One thing that we can promise is that our conversation will be hopefully less than fascinating so that you can just drift off. Thank you for joining us. We hope you will listen and sleep. I'm your host, Marco Timpano. Joining me once again is a dear friend, Lucy DeRosa. Thank you for coming back to the Insomnia Project. Thank you for having me, Marco. It's a pleasure to be with you again. Last time we recorded, we were in your new hometown, Brooklyn, New York. Yes. I shouldn't say new, your current hometown. Now we're in your former hometown, Toronto, recording. Yeah, it's it's great to be able to be with you in different places, Marco. Yeah. Where would you like the next place we record to be? Wow, wouldn't it be cool if we could go to somewhere in Asia? Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe Thailand. Oh, I love that? Thailand. Yeah. How great would it be if we were at a podcast festival in Thailand? It would and be fantastic. And I say this because Lucy is a fellow podcaster, and her podcast is called all these scars are mine. Right. And a look at our show, show notes. Now, Lucy, we were talking about this earlier. We went to high school together, and you were the coolest friend I had in high school. Because I, I was in the same class with your sister, and you were in a, in a class or two above me. And so you were a senior, and I was a junior, and you were nice to me and my friends and your sister's friends. And I always thought, oh. This is like the coolest person in the school that I know. And now you're one of the coolest people on my podcast, so thank you. Thank you. And I, I, I'm not just saying this. I feel the same way about you, Marco. Oh, thank you. Let's talk transit. Okay. There's a segue if you've ever heard one in, in your life. You live in New York City, in Brooklyn, and so you often use various modes of transportation to get around. What's your favorite mode of transportation? So I live on the East River uh, in Brooklyn, uh, Cobble Hill, Carroll Gardens area. And I work in lower Manhattan, at the tip of Manhattan. And so normally to go to work, I take a ferry. I go by boat to work. And I love that. I really do. What is it about the ferry that you enjoy? It's just the connotation for me, even though I, I do it multiple times a week now, I feel like it's it's just like a little bit of a vacation, right? You're on the water. You can go on the top level, which I don't usually do because sure. there's, there are lots of tourists, but sometimes I do. And, um, you know, the wind is blowing in your hair and you can see the Statue of Liberty and and downtown Manhattan, the Brooklyn Bridge. It's just uh, very pretty. And, you know, people come from all over the world to see this view and, and, and to look at this water. And it's nice. It's just so much fun to be able to sail every day and see this view uh, twice a day. How nice is it that you don't take that for granted, that so many people come from far and away to see the view that you get daily? <laughs> No, I, I really don't. I actually, I get a kick out of seeing tourists, you know, like tour, there are tour buses that come to my neighborhood. And, and I know, I mean, in a lot of places where people live, where a lot of tourists come in, I know it can be challenging because sometimes people walk really slowly, they clog up the sidewalks or whatever, they might be loud or, but I, I really do feel like I don't know. I'm I'm grateful and I'm enthusiastic that people come from all over the world to see this place. And it's a place where I live. And uh, I think it's important to represent it well for the people who come, save a lot of money and come to this expensive place to see what it's like. How yeah. lovely is that? I I agree. I think that the person who lives in this in their home city, when they encounter a tourist, I'm not saying it's their duty. But it would be lovely if you or if one treated tour, tourists with a sort of admiration that they're in your city. I was recently in an Uber and there was some, there was a couple from California, from the Bay Area, and they were driving across town to get a beaver tail. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, you, 
And, you know, Lucy, they're just going to a little shack to get it. Like they were crossing town and they were like, someone told us we should be having a beaver tail. And for our listeners who don't know what a beaver tail is, it's basically flat stretched dough that's fried. So like a donut. And then you put here, they'll put maple syrup or cinnamon and lemon or Nutella. Right. And so this, these tours were traveling across town, which I thought was silly, but they were really excited. Yeah. And I was like, great. I go, listen, I hope you enjoy your time in my city and I hope my countrymen treat you well. And they were like, oh, thank you. Yeah, we've had a great time. And that's my thing that I always try to do with tourists. Not only help them if they need direction, but always to say, I hope people are treating you well. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I mean, we are all someone else's tourist yes. at some point. So I think it's... It's. I think it's important to be gracious and to treat visitors the way you would want to be treated. What's the touristy thing you like to do when you're in a different place? Uh, probably touristy things. So go out and eat a dessert that oh. a lot of tourists like to eat oh, in different this. places. And then I also really like museums. I go to museums all the time, so I like to do it uh, when I travel. Oh, amazing. So two of my favorite things you've just mentioned, I have two places in New York that I love. So for for desserts, I love getting cheesecake at Junior's. Oh, yeah. Which is in Brooklyn. But yeah. But now they have it in Manhattan as That's well. That's right. And I love the Tenement Museum. Oh yeah, the Lower East Side. Those are well, that's one of my favorite museums. Mm -hmm. What has been a suite or museum that you found elsewhere that you've really fallen in love with? I know it's an unfair question. No, I uh, yeah, um, it's Maybe not, not an not. unfair question. So, when I was when I was fourteen, I believe um, my family traveled throughout Italy by car, and we stopped in Florence just for a day trip. We were actually staying elsewhere in Tuscany. And so I was at 14, I was pretty young and I hadn't studied much art, but I remember we went into the Uffizi and it was one of those things where uh, when I saw Botticelli's Primavera, it was like one of those things where you turn the corner and you see it. Mm -hmm. And I really was stunned to see it, in part because I already knew about it. it was, it's such a famous painting that even as a kid, I knew what it was. But par partially it really is just that it's such a beautiful painting. Sure. And I remember just being entranced mm -hmm. looking at it. Um, so I guess that would be one place. And then um, I'm not sure in terms of food. So I think in in southern Italy, which is where I was born, uh, I can't think of a specific place, but just in general, the ice cream, the sure. gelato, right? Like on the Amalfi Coast, so driving from town to town, mm -hmm. seeing what all the different beach uh, resorts are like. And, you know, there, there are always gelateria that you can go to. And just the, that, the ice cream is just so delicious. I never get tired of eating it. Sure. Um, I'd love getting art struck. I don't know how else to describe it, where you see a famous piece of art that you've seen in books or in postcards and whatnot. Mm. And then you see it in front of you. And that moment, that sort of pop of like, oh, I'm seeing it. And the impression that it leaves you because I remember seeing the birth of Venus. Mm, yes. And I remember seeing it and thinking to myself, oh, wow, it looks so much like a comic strip to me. Like it looked so, um, I don't know, I think it was the vibrant colors and the way the figures were drawn. It reminded me of a comic figure and the flowing hair. Right. It seemed like a superhero. She seemed like a superhero with her long flowing hair and how stoic she stood on the shell. And the colors reminded me of a comic book. Likewise, when I saw the Mona Lisa, like everyone had told me that it's much smaller than you would expect. But I was struck by how the eyes followed me. And that's something people said. But I wasn't expecting it to have that kind of impression as it did. Yeah. I remember, I mean, this is not a work of art, but I had a similar response in Edinburgh, um, seeing the landscape with uh, the castle and, there, you know, there was like a bagpipe player sure. and it was just so gorgeous and green and, and it just knocked me out sure. and it just stopped me in my tracks and, you know, and then all that crabby mental <laughs> cloudiness and just, just went away disappear and disappear. I was just like, wow, this is gorgeous. I'll never forget driving in 
Colorado mm-hmm. and turning some of these corners and these beautiful mountains. Just when you thought it couldn't get any prettier or any more majestic or awestruck striking I'd turn a corner and that was Colorado for me Colorado will always be the drive that I drew, drove through those windy streets through the mountains through the Rockies um, that and Michelle Miracle who's a dear friend of mine from mm. Denver but that's that for me will always be Colorado that's amazing mm-hmm. mountains can do that too right mm-hmm. just like because you never know when you turn what's going to happen next yeah. so Marco let me ask you a question so we've talked about uh boating right and we've talked sure. about driving so what is the weirdest vehicle you've ever ridden in so i drove a so i was a cycle tour guide and i drove a huge 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 van that had bicycles on the roof and then a trailer with bicycles behind it mm. And I had to drive this in Europe, where the streets are very narrow. Right. And do you know what counter steering is? I've heard of it, but I don't know. I've done it, and I still don't know. <laughs> so basically, when you have a trailer behind you, you have to turn your wheel. If you're backing up, you have to turn your steering wheel the opposite way that oh, you would turn yes. your steering wheel if you had not had a trailer on the back. And I apologize if I'm getting this wrong for our listeners who might be saying, he's got it wrong. But I remember one time, Lucy, that I got stuck between two short walls in a farm, in in a farm, like um, a Masseria is a fortified farmhouse that was walled with a small walls on either side. And I got stuck oh, with this no. vehicle. Unbelievable. And, and so... A three-point turn will get you out when you're stuck at a dead end. Because I had <laughs> I had to counter steer, it took me easily an hour and 45 minutes of just small increments up and back up with someone guiding me to get out of this mess. But that and probably I took a helicopter ride one time. Oh, you so did. I think Where? I, so I'm from a little, I'm from a, from a town or a hamlet called Woodbridge, Ontario, mm-hmm. which you know, and they have a Thanksgiving fall fair. <laughs> so that's, I'm not going to say that's their claim to fame, but that's one of the things they do. Right. Estee Lauder was born there. I know. Isn't I heard it? that I, because I am a fan of this podcast, okay. I remember you mentioned that mm-hmm. once on one of the episodes and I fell off my chair. I'm like, mm-hmm. what? I had no idea. So that... I, cause I looked up famous people from, to see if I was famous people from Woodbridge to see if I made that list. <laughs> Clearly I didn't, but Estee Lauder well, rightly so. Not did. yet. Fair. <laughs> so, if not now, when? But um, so they had at the fun fair that you could take a helicopter ride and because it's the fall fair, I should say. Um, because it's it's during the fall, all the trees there are different colors. And so it wasn't inexpensive, but I thought it was worth it. And we took the helicopter ride around. That's great. Yeah. I, I actually, the building I, I work in in New York is right above the helipad that you see like in lower Manhattan. And, you know, in like, remember Working Girl of when course. they, <laughs> that helipad. And uh, I, I'm in, ambi- I've never tried uh, right. No, okay. but I think I would probably be very afraid while I was in the helicopter. Yeah, it's not as bad as you think. It's a. Lo- it's actually quite lovely because you can see on all sides. Yes, and it's rather smooth, smoother than I thought. It makes noise, but it's actually a lot more tranquil than one might think. Mm. I, I will say that. I have to say that. And. I don't know. What are some odd trans- modes of transportation that you've taken? So uh, three or four summers ago, I actually, along with um, another person, produced uh, a play. Um, and we it was really done on a shoestring budget. So I did a lot of miscellaneous sure. jobs. And one of the things that I did, so we rented most of the set from this place in deep New Jersey um, and I drove a 14 foot truck from Brooklyn through Manhattan and into New Jersey actually and I got a friend of mine for that trip I got a friend of mine to to drive part of the way Um, and then on the way at the end of the 
to where I drove by myself. <laughs> but you did it. I did it. Um, but you were, really... you, you were telling me that you enjoy driving, apart I from do. these incidents. I do enjoy driving. And, um, you know, when I lived here in Toronto, I used to drive everywhere. And I used to know, like, where all the parking spots were. And, you know, and I... Uh, you know, I, I remember I had this friend who said that I wielded my stick shift like a like a broken beer bottle. Oh, that's <laughs> great. Fight. Yeah. So. But it's nice to know for our listeners that there's people in other parts of the world or in their home city that face the same challenges yep. with transportation yep. and traffic. So we're all there. We're with you when you're if you're listening to this in traffic, which I don't advise you to be listening to a <laughs> podcast that's designed to make you fall asleep. But let's say you're on the subway and you're listening to us. I should the say. subway. We should talk about that. Yeah, we'll talk about subways. You know, Lucy, speaking of transportation, we have listeners who listen to this podcast when they take off, like people who are on the plane. And they're oh, like, I yes. just want to be distracted from all that yes. sort of um, stuff that happens when you're on a plane. And they're, they're like, I listen to it on the takeoff by the time we're in the air. From the moment I sit down, your podcast is done. And it's a wonderful accompaniment. I do that. And oh, do sometimes, you? you know, on, um, I don't know if this rule is the same on every airline, but on, can I say the name of the yes. airline? So on Air Canada, which I do love because they have so many flights between Toronto and New York, they they don't let you wear your the headphones. Yeah. And I actually, I, I am generally a rule follower, mm-hmm. but I surreptitiously continue to wear my headset when we take off and especially when we land because it does relax me to listen I'm, to a podcast. See what I mean when I say yeah. she's one of the coolest people I know? A rebel in the sky <laughs> is what I'm going to call you. Usually it, I, I listen to Buddhist teachings. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> um we should talk about subways because I love taking subways. Mm-hmm. I took a streetcar the other day, and I was like, I have the option of the subway or the streetcar. And I took the streetcar, and I regretted it. I was like, why didn't I take the subway? Because there's something very romantic about streetcars. Yes. Until you're on them in reality, <laughs> and you're like, why am I on a streetcar with so many people pressed against everyone? Someone is clearly too loud on their phone behind me. And it's like, on the subway, you can be in your own sort of space, right? I felt like in the streetcar, you couldn't. And there's some beautiful street, there's some beautiful subways in New York. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite stop? Oh, my gosh. I know. Um, so, you know, the ACE train at 14th Street, it has the little sculptures by, oh my gosh, I usually know his name, by an artist. Anyway, you know the little people? Do you yes. know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. They're like coming out and, you know, he, he does cool sculptures mm-hmm. all over. Like there'll be, like in Brooklyn, he did a sculpture of an alligator coming out of um, he, uh, a grate, right? Yeah. Things like that. Anyway, so like there are all these little individual sculptures at that subway station that's really cool there are some cool there's cool tile work everywhere yeah the tile work is so yeah because some of it's so old and i think there's even i feel like there's a, a defunct subway platform oh yeah that you go through and you can see the old tile and it's so beautiful yeah even canal city street, hall yeah, it's city near hall. there yes and canal street has beautiful old mm-hmm. tiling too if i'm not mm-hmm. mistaken this canal street yeah station. oh you know there's um there's a station uh, off of Central Park, uh, I think it's the B and the D. Anyway, it's it's close to the Dakota uh, where Yoko Ono lives, yes. and she actually painted some murals. They've recently renovated it. I believe it's just been reopened, and Yoko Ono did the murals in in the station. Oh, I would love to see that. You know, I own Yoko Ono's Illy cups. Are you familiar with? So I should just mention this: Illy is a coffee brand that um, an espresso coffee brand and what they do is every year they have a few artists design their particular espresso cups Mm. and it doesn't have to be an artist it can be a person of note someone in the arts and Yoko Ono designed a set either last year or the year before and uh, my wife got it for for my birthday that's a great gift and so I have these beautiful particular I won't even say beautiful but interesting espresso cups that Yoko Ono designed. That's great. Yeah, she's a she's an individual. She's a great artist. Sure. She, she's, a, she's very imaginative and she's there's no one else like her. Fair. Fair enough. Have you ever been on a subway in a different city that you've enjoyed? 
the subway in Washington D.C. Oh. is nice and clean, and yeah, the people liken it to the subway here in Toronto. I've been to Montreal. the one in, in Moscow. Oh. oh, it's so gorgeous! Like you see the chandeliers and and the and the um, what are you, escalators that take you really far down, and every Amazing. station is so gorgeous. I want to go to the one in Los Angeles. Yes, and you know what? I went to Los Angeles a few years ago, and I was close to a subway station, but I never went in. I don't know. I don't really have a sense of it. I was talking to my friend Nima, who lives in L.A., and he had mentioned that it's not necessarily used as much as it should be by Angelinos. And um, he was explaining to me why, and I was like, oh, now I really want to see what the subway is right. like. I always find it fascinating, the design of the subway. Like, if you look at the sort of, I don't know what you'd call it, but the map of, the, of subways in different places yes, and what yes. they look like. Yes. And, like, you know, is it a circle? Like, in London, the underground, it's a circle with a whole bunch of lines going up and down it. Right. And, and New York's and Toronto's, which I think is kind of measly, but it looks almost <laughs> like plumbing. You know what I mean? The Toronto yes, one looks it like does. plumbing. Marco, it's so funny that we're talking about the subway because I was thinking earlier today uh, about the fact that you were pepper sprayed in the subway in Paris. That's right, I was. Oh my god! This is the episode that no one's going to sleep through because it's all <laughs> dramatic moments. But for anyone who has had encounters in the subway, years and years ago, we were in the Paris subway station and my friend and I, we were backpacking through Europe, having a great time. And we were looking at a subway map on the wall to figure out how to get from Sakakou to wherever we were going. And there was a bit of a chase that went on. And we just heard some commotion in French, and my French is not great at all. And we turned, and then all of a sudden, the person being chased pepper sprayed the officer who was chasing him, and we felt the effects of the pepper spray. Oh and it gosh. wasn't fun. And I love pepper, peppercorn, <laughs> you know, any any anything, jalapeno peppers, you name the pepper, I'm usually a big fan, but not pepper spray. Don't get pepper sprayed in a small space. That's awful. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever? Okay. Have you been to San Francisco? No, I haven't. Okay. I was going to say, did you go on the trolleys there? No, I haven't. Um... There are trolleys in New Orleans, too, right? I haven't been there either. No, I haven't. I don't I think I've ever been on a trolley. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to think if I ever no, been on I a trolley. <clears throat> so I recently went on, speaking of modes of transportation, have you ever been on an alpine concrete slide? So certain mountains will oh. have these, like you sit in a little sled and it's in a concrete track, and you push the lever in front of you down to go fast or towards you to go fast, and it goes. No, I've... I've been on one of those, and they're not fun. Yeah, I've been to Lake Placid, where the Olympics have happened a couple of times, and it was during the summer. Okay. So I saw the... Obviously not the luge, but the... Anyway, no, not the luge, the bobsled. Yeah, the bobsled, yeah. sure, yeah. The runs, and it doesn't... I don't think I would have fun no. going down that. I'm not one for speed. Me neither. That's and drops. I don't like drops. No, I don't like drops either. Yeah. No, that's not my thing. I like a nice stroll, too. Yeah. You also like a nice little cruise on a Vespa, don't you? Yeah, we we just sold ours, but there's something beautiful about seeing a city on a on a moped uh, or a Vespa or even, like, I guess, a, a mountain bike, electronic, mm -hmm. um, not electronic, but like a a bike that, that goes that you yeah. don't have to do effort and just putting around I did it in Greece once and ever since we and we chased the sunset because we were in San oh, Sardini, nice. and the only reason we did it was someone had told us oh but the sunset on the end of the island is so beautiful and I'm like what and they're like yeah we're known for it and it was like dusk and we're like we've got to <laughs> and so it was just us racing on this moped to try to get to the end of the island to see to see the sunset and then after that I was just addicted and we had we had one and it was one of the best ways to see a city is on a moped I think because you yeah. can you can cross a lot of it right and still be still feel like you're amongst the city versus being in a closed compartment like a car or street car subway you're amongst the people hmm. have you ever have you ever ridden in a Vespa Yes, not often, but mm -hmm. I think with relatives in Italy mainly, mm -hmm. um, just uh, Vespas and mopeds. Yeah, I've never owned one, though. Are they prevalent in New York? 
Are you seeing them in New York? There, there are quite a few. Um, yeah, quite a few people have scooters. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this. What is the stop that you take your ferry from and to where you live? I take it from Atlantic Avenue, Brooklyn Bridge Park, and it's two stops. Oh. Uh, so it's the, the trip is very short. Um, and the, the first stop is in Dumbo, which is also in Brooklyn Bridge Park, and then it crosses the river to Wall Street, and that's the last stop okay. on the route, which is the South Brooklyn route, and that's it. And that's faster than taking the, the subway. You know what? It actually, from door to door, it's probably the same because I have to do different amounts of walking each way, sure. but it just feels faster by ferry, even because there's a clearer schedule the, the way there is with trains, right? Sure. So you get there at a certain time, there's no waiting, you know, whereas with the subway, you might get on right away, you might have to wait 10 minutes. And so it just feels faster, even though it's probably around the same time. And it sounds like a beautiful trip. Yeah, I, I really do enjoy it. Well, this was a beautiful trip. Lucy, thank you so much for doing, you. doing this podcast again with us here at the Insomnia Project. And we hope, if you're listening to this as you are taking a trip, we hope your trip is beautiful and you have a safe one. Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Lucy. As always, the Insomnia Project is produced by Drumcast Productions. And this episode, as we mentioned earlier, is recorded in Lucy's former hometown, Toronto, 